I'm Matteo Pekic, founder of 3DQ and inventor of the vapor bed surface. Over the past few months, we've been doing regular live streams at the office, but we felt that we needed to add something interesting to the background to make the studio more unique. So we found a model by Thingiverse user John Oldman that looked really cool. It was basically a shelf system designed to hold benchies, but due to its size, we figured we could fit all sorts of test models that we've come up with over the years. And with our automated printers, we knew that we could get the parts for a very, very large shelf done in a matter of days without interrupting anyone's work schedule too much. Because we wanted to minimize the strain on our production printers, which were already very busy making Quinley kits, we decided to run only three of our Ender 3s for this test. In just one week, we managed to get the printers to print over 340 parts for this shelf without any of our print operators having to put in more than a couple of minutes of work. For this model, we needed strong and fast G-code to produce a usable shelf in as short a time span as possible. We did this by using 0.8mm nozzles on our printers to get thicker 1mm walls and to decrease the print time. We also upped the hot end temperature to 240C for faster flow for 0.5mm thick layers. We printed four parts at a time on our Quinley printers and all of this slicing totaled about 30 minutes of human effort. The reason it took that time is because we had to generate three iterations of G-code to optimize for the performance we wanted. After a short time, we had hundreds of parts, but when it came to fitting them together, they were actually a little bit tighter than we anticipated. The issue we found was when printing really fast, certain parts are not designed to be printed at the layer heights and line widths we were using. And while in our initial testing, it was not too bad because there's only a couple of parts, these tolerance issues actually multiplied as we expanded the shelf and expanded the grid and you'll notice we actually had to start using a hammer to make sure that the parts would start aligning. So that was definitely something that only came about very late into production. And small issues like this, especially in modular projects like this shelf, will slowly accumulate and only really manifest once you've started putting everything together. So it's very important to constantly be testing your parts and even if there may be slight tolerance issues in the beginning, it's worth paying attention to that in case they multiply throughout the rest of the project. So we had 200 hours of print time spread out over the four days we ran this test. It only took one hour of an operator's time from slicing and changing out filament spools and we printed over 300 separate components using nearly four kilograms of filament. If it were manual, even a conservative estimate would put the setup and the removal of each part at about five minutes per cycle, which means over 300 parts, you can expect an operator or yourself to be spending 25 hours over the course of a similar size project. Time would also be lost printing overnight because obviously many of us sleep. And so printing the project and all 300 parts would have taken far longer as well. Quinley works 24 seven, so you don't have that problem. And because it doesn't require operator intervention every cycle, you're able to run it much more efficiently with that one hour of operator time being concentrated at the beginning during slicing and only partway in the middle when we had to replace filament. So after all that printing and all of these parts, we've learned about the challenges with printing at maximum speed. Something we want to improve as we print more shells is the fit and tolerance for the parts. For future projects like these, we'll keep in mind that even seemingly small changes in G-codes can throw off the dimensions of batches of parts. We also realize that some of the models just aren't meant to be printed with line widths this wide. We spent a lot of time perfecting our G-code and sending out long production runs, but even fun challenges like these require full attention. We hope that if you have a Quinley system at home, you can learn from us instead of making the same mistakes yourself. So make sure to subscribe to Perpetual Printing and follow us on social media to stay up to date with the things that we've learned from pushing our Ender 3s to the absolute limit. So see you guys next time. Happy Perpetual Printing.